Wow, wasn't that incredible worship? Uh, man, what, did a, what a great time in God's presence together. I think that we should pray. And I'm gonna pray that wherever you were at, that you were going to experience God's power, God's presence, and God's miracles in your life right now. Come on, so if you need to experience God's presence, if you need to experience a miracle from heaven in your life, come on, you can put a hand towards heaven, you can put your hand on your heart right now, but God, I'm praying for every single person watching this right now. I pray that the presence of God would invade their home. That literally your presence, your love from heaven would invade their home, would invade their apartment. Maybe they're watching this from a car on a phone. God, I'm praying that they would experience your presence. Someone watching this, you need a miracle. Not only a physical miracle, but I even believe someone watching this right now, you are wondering and you're stressing how you're going to pay the next rent. I'm praying right now for a miracle from heaven, a miraculous provision from heaven, that you're just gonna have this sense, not only is God gonna work it out, but that you are going to be okay. Sir, you're gonna be okay. Ma'am, you're gonna be okay. God, I'm praying that we would be a people that not only sense God's presence, that sense your presence, God, but that also see heaven come on earth, that we would experience in the same way that Jesus prayed, let your kingdom come and let your will be done here on earth, just as it is in heaven. God, we wanna see your kingdom come. And so I'm praying that people watching this right now, that they would experience the kingdom of God in their life in Jesus' name. Come on, if you agree with that prayer, someone said amen. Come on, someone said amen. Come on, you can give some hearts, some likes, uh, subscribe on YouTube, do whatever you need to do, but come on, let's just say a big amen for that. Hey, today we are continuing this series of talks called Fight Forward. Come on, someone say fight. Come on, say it out loud, say fight. Now say forward, fight forward. And we've been going through all of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and just looking at the resurrection story of Christ, uh, starting on Easter Sunday, starting last week, we started talking about the resurrection story. And we're going to look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John along this, through this lens of fight forward, fight forward. Now, if you missed last week, you can go back and watch that. But also if you missed last week, I want to make sure that you know this exciting announcement uh, that we are calling our roadmap to reopening here at the house. And we're going to make sure that you see that on the bottom of your screen there. And that's this. We believe that as a church, it is time for us to meet again. So on July 4th, we, were, we will reopen our doors in Los Angeles for in-person weekly gatherings while continuing to build out our online community in other cities. We really believe that we are supposed to, to meet in person, but also continue this, uh, this incredible opportunity that we have been given during this time to reach out to other cities and to build the kingdom of God and help people connect with other people and do great things for God. And so if you're here in LA, we'd love to meet with you as we're going once a month building up to that. We're going to do the first Sunday of every month. We're going to start meeting and gathering together to prepare for that July 4th reopening. But even as we're online, we are continuing to build online together. So without further ado, let's jump in. Last week we started with Matthew. Today we are going to jump into the Gospel of Mark, the very last chapter, Mark 16, and we're going to start at verse number 9. And Jesus rose from the dead early on Sunday morning. The first person who saw him was Mary Magdalene, a woman whom he had cast out seven demons. This is just a lot of stuff. Let me just say, if you've gone through some stuff in your life, not only is there room in the kingdom of God for you, but guess what? There's room at the house for you. Someone said amen. She went to the disciples who were grieving and weeping and told them what had happened. She's like, hey, I saw the resurrected Lord. But when she told them that Jesus was alive and she had seen him, they didn't believe her. Afterwards, he appeared in a different form to two of his followers who were walking from Jerusalem into the country. And they rushed back to tell the others, but no one believed them either. Isn't that so funny? All the people that were supposed to believe still doubted. Still later, he appeared to the 11 disciples as they were eating together, and he rebuked them for their, for their stubborn unbelief. He's like, guys, how many times do I have to prove to you that I am still alive? I told you I would. I showed up to Mary Magdalene. I showed up to the two disciples. I showed up to others, and you still don't believe. Uh, verse 15, and he told them, this is what he said, Go. Someone say that word go. This is an important word here. Say go. Go into all the world and preach the good news to people that you like, to people that look like you. No, to everyone. And anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved. 
But anyone who refused to believe they're going to be condemned, these miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name. They will speak in new languages. They will be able to handle snakes with safety. If they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick, and the sick will be healed. When the Lord Jesus had finished talking with them, he was taken up into heaven, and he sat down in the place of honor, God's right hand. And the disciples, following Jesus' command, they went everywhere and preached, and the Lord worked through them, confirming what they said, the gospel that they were preaching, by what? By miraculous signs. Fight forward. Pick your battles. Uh, I don't know, how many of you watching this right now, you are married, you're married. Come on, you're married or you're in a relationship. You're in a relationship, not like, ah, uh, like we're kind of hanging out, but like you were in a committed relationship with someone. Let me see your hands. Okay, let me see your hands now. Type their name in the chat box. I'm just kidding. Some, some people might have just broken up. They're like, wait, I thought that we were in a, and you wrote someone else's. It just got really awkward at church. But one of the things Uh, that my father-in-law, Joe, that he really encouraged me at the beginning of Vanessa and I's uh, marriage, in the beginning of our relationship, he was like this. Because I would, everything to me at the beginning of uh, of our marriage and like as we're leading up to that, everything was like, I was like, hey, we need to talk about this. We need to, you know, we need to kind of hash this out. And I remember him shouting from the other room. He's like sitting on a couch. He's like, dude, that's what he would say. My father, dude, Pick your battles. <laughs> and, and it was because for me at that time, everything, I was willing to fight about everything. I'm willing, hey, we're going to talk about this. I remember when we were planning our wedding. And here's the funniest thing. I thought it was our wedding. I didn't realize that it was her wedding that I was a participant in. But I remember her and her mom going through all these books. And I was like, hey, I have some questions about some colors. I think I have some ideas I kind of want to bring to the page. And I remember both of them just kind of like looking at me. And I realized I am not a star player. I'm literally just a support role. I thought that I was the leading actor and actually I'm just like a grip in the back. I'm just someone holding the camera. But I just remember that, pick your battles. Someone said, pick your battles. So much in life is about picking the right battles. Well, if you ignore them all, you got your head in the sand. But if you take all of them on, you got to ask yourself, hey, is this worth it? I mean, I, I mean, I'm battling something, man. I'm battling people in traffic. I'm battling people at department stores. I'm battling with my boss. I'm battling, battling, battling my kids, battling my spouse, battling my roommates, battling, 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 and wondering, am I picking the right battles? Let me just say this. There are a lot of things worthy of fighting for, but the question is, how do I know which battle do I pick? I think a lot of them will come down to this. A lot of the battles that we have and that we are facing specifically in America today is this. Will I fight people or will I fight for people? Will I fight people or will I fight for people? Another way to say, are people my enemy or am I going to fight on behalf of people? Whether you and I, whether we recognize it or not, we are in a fight. We are in a fight, and the fight that I'm about to talk about is probably not the fight that the first fight that came to your mind when I was, we're in a fight. Yeah, we're in a fight. It's about Republicans and Democrats. It's about this thing. It's about taxation. It's about this. It's about that. It's like, it's like no, we're in a fight. Before any of those fights, you are in a spiritual battle. You are in a spiritual battle. You are in a spiritual battle. Now, I don't know if you know this, but we are created. I, in, in the world today, people, when they talk about, oh, you know, you're, you're uh, they talk about, hey, in your body, in your soul, in your spirit. And they say, hey, you know, you got this thing going, you know, your body. And, and they got it backwards because you are not a body that has a soul and your spirit's kind of back and they're floating around. But actually, you are a spirit. That's who you are. Your spirit, it's, it's eternal. Even when you die, that's where we kind of think about when you die, your spirit goes on. And believers in Jesus and those, they, they get to spend eternity with Jesus. Why? Because your spirit is eternal. That's who you are. You have a soul. That's your mind, your will, and your emotions. You have a soul. Things that affect you, things that happen to you, they, they can affect you. They can affect the way that you think. They can affect your life. But your body is just a house. 
This five foot 10 strapping frame that you look at right now is just the house of Wes Dunn. This is not me, this is just house. But you are not a body that has a soul and that your spirit's kind of back there. Actually, you are a spirit that has a soul that lives in a body. The reason why that's important to know is this, is that as our world often gets that backwards, they fight backwards too. They think of themselves as a body first, and so the first fight that they want to get in is to with another human. Because it's a physical fight with someone else. It's a, or, or maybe even a soul fight. It's a kind of a mentality. How do we think about stuff? How do we interact with stuff? Which that one's actually a better conversation than, than the first one. But in fact, before all of that, you and I, we are spiritual beings. That's why Paul tells people that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Why? Your body is just, it's just a casing. It's a house. Somewhere that you are temporarily, temporarily residing. So the question I want to ask today on this is maybe the problem that you might be facing is not a physical problem with another human, but maybe the fight that you are facing is actually a spiritual problem. I like sports and um, I, like, I like watching football. I like watching basketball. My brother-in-law sometimes watches golf and then sometimes he'll watch golf that happened like earlier and I'm like you can already just look up the score it's like oh my gosh is he gonna make this butt like you saw <laughs> you saw the scoreboard but I enjoy sports now one of the things that's crazy about sports is this is that when players and teams take cheap shots against other teams have you ever seen this happen when players and teams take cheap shots against other teams because they know that they cannot win on normal terms so what they do is when they tackle that player they'll do something called an alligator roll and what it, what, what they'll do in football they will grab that player's leg they'll tackle him and when they land on the ground they'll roll around on the ground as if they're tackling that person but really they're trying to like rip apart their acl mcl they're trying to like get that person not to tap out for a play but to tap out for life it's a dirty play they do in basketball too a player goes up in the air and as a player goes up in the air to shoot the shot the defender will not just block the shot they'll kind of step underneath them this happened with Kobe someone tried to step underneath them and he lands on their foot and when they land on their foot they roll their ankle they're not trying to take them out for a moment they're trying to take them out for life well guess what do you think that the devil, the enemy of your soul, the enemy of your spirit, do you think that the devil would be a clean fighter or a dirty fighter? The devil will take any cheap shot against you that he can. Early on uh, in, in my journey of following God and leading for God in, 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 this, in this journey that we call ministry, Early on in this journey, uh, there was this older minister that I respected a great deal. And I remember he told me this phrase and it has stuck with me. People are not our enemy. The enemy is our enemy. Isn't that so good? People are not your enemy. I know sometimes maybe your roommate didn't pay rent. That person that can't still seem to drive in one lane or the other seems like they might be your enemy. Your boss has always given you a hard time or this person or these things that are kind of happening to you. I wonder if we were to pause for a moment and say, people are not my enemy. I'm not just in a physical fight. There is a spiritual fight taking place. Maybe that habit that you're battling, you know, that one that came up during COVID that you thought that was gone, it's, oh, it's, oh, it's under the blood, that one that came up again. I wonder if that habit that you're battling is not just a habit that's resurfaced, but it's the enemy trying to take you out of the game. I wonder if that, finance, that financial problem of maybe your car, like, oh, I finally got it paid off. And the day you get it paid off, your tire blows out and your transmission starts making all of these weird noises. I wonder if that's not just a happenstance thing that happened. I wonder if that's the enemy trying to take you backwards, to take you out. That fight in your relationships or amongst your friend group, watch this. The moment that you and some friends decide to start praying together, you will never guess what happened. All of a sudden, there's some schism or division that begins to happen and you'll begin to feel it. Pastor Wendell, the late Pastor Wendell, Pastor Jenny's husband, he used to call it this and they used to call it this dragon wrath. That's right before God's about to do something, it seems like all hell breaks loose in your life. 
So I wonder if that fight going on in your relationship is not just that your spouse forgot to take out the trash again. I wonder if that fight in your relationship is not just, well, I'm not getting the love and the affection that I want. I wonder if that fight between that friend group is not like, I feel like I'm always the one paying for brunch or I'm always the one driving you. I wonder if that fight is not a physical fight, but it's actually the enemy trying to take you down. That anxiety swirling around in your mind. I wonder if the enemy is trying to get your mind wrapped around something else instead of creatively thinking about all of the things that God is doing in your world. Your life has a mission from God. Your money has a mission from God. Your marriage and your relationships have a mission from God. Your purity has a mission from God. Your relationships has a mission from God. Your mind has a mission. You have a mission. And this mission comes from God. Jesus tells his disciples in Mark 16, and he tells us today that we have a mission. And he says, go and preach. Go and help all people. Go and help all people. Uh, So some of you guys have seen this who are part of our church. We do a food distribution. We've partnered up with some other incredible organizations. Uh, You saw last week we're doing all kinds of special things to partner with them as well. This is something we believe. We see that there are needs in our city around us. And we just want our city to know, not just preaching from a stage, but like with practical food, we care about you. We want to help. God loves you. And we tell them, we're passing out groceries that, hey, we love you. Just want to say, hey, God bless. We are with you. Jesus tells his disciples and he tells us today, go, go and tell people the good news. Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. That's in Mark 16, 15. Let them know that there's love. Let them know that there's hope. Let them know that there's forgiveness, that there's something bigger to life than just a body. But it's important to note, Just because the mission comes from God does not mean that it comes without a fight. Oh my gosh, so I I need to say that again. Just because the mission comes from God does not mean that it will come without a fight. Have you ever thought like, hey, God, you sent me on this mission. Why is it so difficult? Because you've got an enemy. Because it's like like a football team. Like I was going to go score a touchdown, but the other guys, they're trying to stop me. Can you, believe, can you imagine if a football player, like, hey, Saquon Barkley, you had a terrible game today. You rushed for 32 yards. Yeah, I wouldn't rush for more, but all those other people were like totally against me. Can you imagine? We'd be like, yeah, that's, your, I mean, that's why you work out. That's why you've got quads the size of just like two people's bodies. That's why you're so strong. That's why you're so gifted. That's why you're in the NFL. That's why you were given the ball. Because you have the ability to run around. Let me just say this, just because God has passed you the ball doesn't mean that there's not defenders out there. Spiritual battles, by the way, they are fought on spiritual terms. You're, you, yeah, I mean, you're not going out there shadow boxing, karate chopping the enemy. You're like, all right, I'm ready to go fight. I'm ready to go do this. Jesus, when he sends out his disciples, now just to keep you like, in, in mind here, these are knuckleheads. I know that we see them all in the, like, in the paintings, like Michelangelo paints them, and they're always like thinking, and they're doing spiritual stuff. Like when you read the stories, it kind of sounds like your knucklehead cousin that you get embarrassed of at like family events. Like Peter's taking out a sword and cutting off people's ears right before Jesus dies on the cross. They're arguing amongst themselves, who's going to be the greatest amongst them? They're like, I want to be the greatest, I'm going to be the And Jesus like, hey, what are you guys talking about back there? Oh, we're just, uh, just a thing between the guys. He goes, yeah, let me tell you about who's the greatest. It's whoever is the least. It's whoever is the servant. These guys are kind of knuckleheads, but check this out. Jesus, when he sends his disciples out on a mission, he's like, you are going to encounter some fight. Come on, someone say fight forward. Come on, don't lose me. Now say fight forward. Okay, pick your battles. You got to pick your battles. He's sending them out. He says, you've got a mission. And they're like, all right, you've got a mission, but check this out. Peter, put away your sword. I know you're fond of cutting off people's ears. Uh, you know, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, that he calls them sons of thunder because they wanted to fight people, okay? These are guys that would get kicked out of restaurants today. Why? Because they're like yelling at people, okay? And so he's like, all right, you are going to be in a battle. I'm sending you out. There's going to be defense coming against you. Here is how you're going to fight. The devil is going to try to send his message of destruction and the gospel is the remedy. Sickness is our enemy. So you're going to go lay hands on the sick. 
Snakes, poison, demonic forces, all of these are going to try to stop you. Your remedy is not to yell at them, to fight them. Your remedy is this. It's the power of God in and through your life. These forces are real, but you know what is more real? The power of God flowing in and through your life. you got to pick your battles. You are not fighting against people. You are fighting for them. Here's how we will fight forward here at the house. We'll fight forward with miraculous signs. I know there's some people that kind of have a hard time when it comes to like praying for miracles and signs and wonders, but let me just say, where, wherever Jesus showed up, miracles happen. Wherever Jesus showed and guess what? When Jesus starts showing up in your world, miracles happen. We're going to fight forward with authority over demonic forces. Some things that we're facing in our world, like, man, that's a, that's a problem here and that's a problem here. Some of them are like, hey, we're going to do something about it. Some of them, we're going to pray something about it. We're going to take authority over some demonic forces. Well, you know what? Another way we're going to fight for, we're going to speak in tongues. I'm not ashamed of it. I speak in tongues. I pray. I don't do it a ton in public settings because sometimes it kind of freak people out. They're like, hey, what's going on? But it's a part of the package here in Mark chapter 16. You know, another way that we're going to fight for in faith is we're going to live unafraid. We're going to be unafraid. We're going to be unafraid. Another way that we're going to fight for it is we're going to heal the sick. Not only through practical means like health and just living life with wisdom and de-stressing and eating healthy and working out, but you know what? We're going to lay hands on the sick. And the Bible says in Mark 16, we will see them recover. So the next time that you are facing a fight, the next time that friction is coming your way and you're like, ah, I feel like I've got to fight someone just to get something done around here. Pause and ask yourself this question. Number one, is this the right fight? Not is it a good fight. There's lots of good fights out. Is it a right fight? Is it the right fight for you? Pause and ask yourself, like my father-in-law in the other room, dude, pick your battles. Is it the right fight? Number two, am I fighting it the right way? So it's one thing to identify, hey, this is a fight worth, yeah, this is a fight. But then second thing, is this, am I, am I fighting this the right way? There's lots of fights that I see out in our society right now that I go, okay, that one, that one may, may not be our fight. And there's some of them I go, that's a fight. That's a fight worth having, but we're not going to fight it that way. Oh, that right there. Oh man, that's a fight over there. We're not, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to fight that way. Some people are like, they want everything to be a fist. And it's like, everything's not going to be a fist. Some things are going to be a prayer. Some things are going to be an example. I hope that people are able to look at our community And see a community that doesn't just fight with fists and words, but a community that actually lives out what we're talking about. I think that's one of the greatest ways that we can fight forward. So is this the right fight? And am I fighting it the right way? Maybe those times that we feel like, have you ever done this? You're like, ah, I need to say something. Maybe I don't need to say something. Maybe I need to pray something. Maybe instead of, hey, can I talk to your manager? I go, hey, God, can I talk to you, the creator of the universe? Maybe I don't need to post something. Maybe I need to serve someone. Maybe I don't need to confront someone. Maybe I just need to pray in the Holy Spirit. Maybe I don't need to pause because I'm afraid, but I need to push forward in faith. Maybe I don't need to refer someone to a doctor. I need to lay hands on them and say, you know what? Before you go to the doctor, we're going to pray for you. I want us as a church at the house to be a church that doesn't just fight, but fights the right battles in the right way. And we will fight for the message of the gospel to be seen and heard in our cities. And we will fight for people. Please do not miss next week as we continue this series of talks on Fight Forward. And we're going to look at the Gospel of Luke together. I'm going to send this out to our lobby and I can't wait to see you next week.